Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing some high-end Dollar Tree DIYs. I wanted to make a distress tray for my kitchen table, so I hit up Dollar Tree for some supplies. I found these little wooden cars and thought the wheels of these would be great for making the feet to my tray. Dollar Tree didn't have the size board that I needed, so I just went out to my garage and grabbed a long board. Honestly, you can use any board you have, any size will work for this project. Now you may be able to use your scissors for this next portion, but I actually used wire cutters and it worked really well. I cut off the dowel rods that were connecting the wheels to the cars, so I was just left with the little circles. Next, I wanted my board to look really distressed. So I came in with my hammer and I just kind of had fun, you know, tearing up this board a little bit, getting it a little bit beaten and worn looking. You can do this with a hammer. You can use pretty much anything to do this with. Next, I took the circles and I glued them to the outside of my board to make little feet. And I doubled them up so that I had two little wheel circles. If you wanted it to be higher, you could always add in additional little circles. I'm using the color golden oak and I'm just going to wipe on one layer and then wipe off the excess. That's all there is to making this cute tray. Next, what I did with it was I put it out on my kitchen table. I'm just gonna decorate it with some plants and a book and some candlesticks. And here's a look at how the tray turned out. These days, it feels like the only shopping we really do is online shopping, and that's where today's sponsor, Honey, comes into play. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. You can get Honey for free on your computer in just two easy clicks. So you wanna go to my URL, joinhoney.com slash Liz. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Then you just wait a few seconds for Honey to search for coupons for that site. If Honey finds a working code, you'll watch the price drop automatically. So the last time I used Honey is when I was shopping on Ulta's website for the mascara I've been loving, but it seems to be sold out everywhere, but I can find it on Ulta. I applied it to my cart, then Honey did its thing. It scoured the internet for the coupon code that would work best for me, and it automatically applied it to my cart. I was able to get $350 off a $15 purchase at Ulta. Normally, I'm like searching through my emails, looking for codes. I don't have to do that with Honey. It's so easy. So remember, you can get Honey for free today. Just go to joinhoney.com slash Liz so that they know I sent you. And I wanna thank Honey for sponsoring today's video. So I told my husband that this next project was probably my new favorite project. And of course he looked at me like I was crazy because he definitely sees all the DIYs in our house. But I love the way this turned out, you guys. So I picked up a green planter at Dollar Tree. Next, I went outside and grabbed a large stick. Now you want this to be about, I would say about three fourths of an inch to an inch in diameter. I didn't uh, film myself cutting this down because when I cut this down it was when the temperatures were like in the negatives so it was just enough for me to run out to my backyard to get a stick and bring it inside so sorry there's no clip of me getting this stick 
Now I did trim up my stick a little bit so that it was in the shape of, basically I was wanting it to kind of be in more of a topiary shape. So you want it to have some branches to it. So I wanted the base of it to just be real clean and then I wanted a few sticks at the top that I could use to add in some more branches. I went to Walmart and I grabbed three of their olive branches. These are in the floral section. They're $3 each. I've gotten these several times, so hopefully your store has them. Next, I'm gonna start cutting off the individual branches. I want them to be about this long, but you'll see as you get them that when you cut them off, that's about how long they are. Now, how are we going to add these to our tree? Well, I wanted it to look really realistic. So what I did was I took my drill and I put a drill bit on that was about the same thickness as my branches. And I started to drill down into my tree branch. And you have to be really careful when you do this. You don't wanna to press too hard, otherwise your branch is just going to snap. That's why I said make sure it's at least three fourths to an inch thickness, that way it's it's not going to automatically break whenever you start doing this and then I'm just going to drill down now if you drill down at an angle that's going to help whenever you stick the branch in for it to kind of stick up at like the right type of angle that a normal branch would stick out like if you did it just sideways it's going to kind of stick out to the side so I started by just drilling holes all around and sticking my branches in now some of my branches went through and they stuck really well some of them I had to add in some hot glue. So it may just vary, but I did have my hot glue gun out and if I needed it, I'd add a little bit of hot glue to the branch to put it in. Now, as you're doing this, start kind of forming your branches. So kind of move them up, twist them, just to kind of see what they're gonna look like. Then you can see the areas where you need to add in more. I wanted to get my tree set in the pot before I went any farther. Now you could use concrete for this. What I had on hand was plaster of Paris. So what I did was I just put the plaster in the existing pot and then I added in water. When I first did this, I had a little bit of a mess because I forgot about the little opening down at the bottom. So I quickly took some hot glue and just put hot glue on the edge so that I sealed that up so that it wasn't a problem. But you're just gonna mix your plaster or your cement with water until until it's about, I would say, three-fourths of the way up. And then I put my plant in the middle. To hold this in place, you could probably use some popsicle sticks. I had some wooden spoons, so I put those around, but that wasn't strong enough to hold it. So I actually had to use painter's tape and tape around this so it could really hold in place. I let this sit and dry for 24 hours. Then I came back the next day and took the tape off. Some of the areas where I cut the branch off, it, I just felt like they stuck out too much. So I went in with my gray elephant paint and just lightly painted over those areas. I also came in with a white paint and painted over it as well. And yes, it looks like paint, but I think it makes it blend in more. And if you're back from a distance, you don't notice that it's paint. Now I still had a few leaves and branches and olives left. So what I decided to now was go in with my hot glue gun and just start putting in olives and like little branches where I felt like there was some empty areas or sparse areas. Then I filled the whole entire thing up with rocks. I love this piece so much, I put it up on my mantle. Now I know I'm gonna get questions about my TV. I recently found this program on Netflix and it's a TV show called Motion Art. And basically you can put it on your TV and it plays just like all this really cool scenery. Now I don't leave this on all the time, but when I'm photographing things for you guys, I think it's cool to have a picture up there. You may use it like if you had a party or something, but if you're somebody who has like that just ugly TV on your fireplace, like I do, 
you, I think it's a great way to turn it into a picture. You guys are gonna have to let me know if you knew about this channel on Netflix. I love that Dollar Tree has out all of their spring items right now. I picked up one of these little tins from Dollar Tree. They had these last year and they're great for projects. Next, I'm gonna use some of my macrame cord. I'm gonna start on the back and I'm just going to hot glue it to the back and start wrapping it around, hot gluing whenever I get to the back. Now, I use this macrame cord in a lot of projects. I will link to it down in the description box so you can go check it out. Next, I wanted to spray paint this piece, so I'm going to be taping off the top half of it. So I'm just gonna take my painter's tape and go about halfway up and tape it off. Now I didn't wanna get any spray paint on the top, so I grabbed some of my craft paper and I'm just going to tape that around the top so I completely seal off the top edge. Next, I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna come in with my spray paint. Now, whenever you're spray painting fabric or yarn, you can actually go a little bit heavier with your spray paint. So I went in and only did one coat of this black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. Next, I removed the tape and I set it out in my hallway and I'm gonna add in one of my favorite new plants. This is a hanging plant that I got at Ikea and I'm just going to put that in and kind of move the branches around and I just think this looks so gorgeous. Have you guys noticed that all of the high-end stores has a version of these chain links. And they're really cute. I think they make great decor, but they're so expensive. So I thought, you know, this would be fun to make. Plus anything that's like really trendy like that, where you know it's gonna go out of style, I don't like to spend a lot of money on. So for this project, I'm going to get a tub of Crayola clay. And I wanna thank you guys for recommending this clay to me. It actually works so much better than the last project where I used clay and I asked for your recommendations, so thank you, thank you. This tub that I got, I purchased off of Amazon, I'll link it for you down below, actually came with four packs in it. And for this project, I used two of the packs. So you could probably buy a lesser amount. I figured I'd use it for another project and I liked that they were sealed up. That way it's not gonna go bad. So what I decided to do to make these chains is I grabbed out just a good amount of the clay and I started to roll it out. Then I decided I needed to make it pretty uniform. So I figured out you know, the diameter that I wanted it to be. So I thought that I wanted each of them to be about an inch inch wide in diameter. And then I used just a little cutting tool that they have at Dollar Tree, and I cut off one edge, and then I cut the other edge off at 17 inches. I thought that would make it really uniform and I wouldn't have to worry about them looking different. And then I just took the two pieces and put them together and tried to smooth it out so you didn't see that edge link. But I wasn't really worried about that because most chains have a little link like that, so I wasn't worried about that. And then I set that piece up to the top. And I repeated this for each of my links. As I kept making new links, I would check the thickness to make sure that the thickness was similar to the links that I already made because I wanted them to look pretty uniform. Then whenever I got one done and cut it, I would wrap it inside of one of my other links so that they were all connected together. 
Now, after you put in as many links as you want, the next thing you want to do is shape it to kind of figure out how you want it to look because whatever shape it's in, that's how it's going to be sitting out on your coffee table. So if you want to elevate it, elevate it now, work with it until you're happy with the way that it looks. Then you want to let it dry for 24 hours. Now I will say with this clay that the longer I let it sit, the more it dried. So I would say I didn't paint it until about day two, but it's, I've had it now for a long time and it's gotten harder over time. So this next part is totally your personal preference. I wanted it to first be painted white, so it was just a really consistent white color. So I went in with Waverly white chalk paint and painted it white. Now the color washing that I decided to do for this piece is, is, I didn't really want it to have that much color, but I came in, I mixed a yellow and a red color, and I put that on, it kind of gave me like a mustardy color. And so I wiped that on and it was just, it was way too thick. So I came in with water. Anytime you want to dilute a paint, you want to add in water. So I added in water and then I took a paper towel and immediately wiped it off. So this gave me just a tiny, tiny bit of color, really not a lot at all. Then I wanted it to have a little bit of brown. So I used my vintage effects wash and put that on, wiped it with water the same way and wiped off any excess. So in the end, it just gave me a tiny, bit of color on this piece but that was the look I was going for if you wanted it to be more of a wood look you could definitely add more color you know really you could customize this any way you wanted you could even go with gray here's a look at how it looks sitting out on my tray know what you guys think of this project. Would you do it or not? I'd love to know down in the comments. So when I was at Dollar Tree, I came across these moss bunnies and to me, they just looked very high end, like something I would see in a high end store. So I grabbed a pack of them and all I did was style them on my shelf. And I think they look adorable and would be a great addition to your spring decor. If you guys are new here, subscribe. It's free right here. If you missed our last video, I'll link it here for you and I'll talk to you guys in our next one.